and um, I'm really excited to, um, I guess, moderate this Dollar Talk for April. Uh, also special because it's a celebration of Earth Day or Week, um, and we have a very special guest today. Um, and so, our guest today is Conrad Becker. He's co-founder of a company named Would You Love? A startup based in Seoul that creates interior design and furniture from recycled plastic. Originally from Germany, Conrad came to Korea in 2006 as part of the first cohort of international students to graduate from Yonsei University's Underwood International College, where he studied international studies and comparative literature and culture. Um, he holds master's degrees in international relations from Peking University and environmental policy from Sciences Po in Paris. Uh, he worked at Korean tech companies such as Hanwha, QCells, and Crossert before starting Would You Love in 2021. Uh, please welcome Conrad Becker, Would You Love? Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. This is the wrong way. Okay, so I think uh, you've already heard about me. Maybe I'll just like add a little bit. Yeah, I, you heard I'm, I'm originally from Germany. I've uh, been living in Germany for about 21 years in total of my life. Uh, 13 years of my life I spent in Korea, three in France and one in China. Uh, if I'm not recycling plastic, I'm also DJing. I'm during Corona, I started gardening, and if I have really time, which I don't really have nowadays, I, I play sometimes strategy games like on the computer. Um, this is WYL, or would you, would you Love, in Korean. Um, yeah, we started about two years ago. We have an office in Seoul and another production place in Paju. And currently, we're about uh, seven people. Um, so what we do is we mostly make uh, furniture and interior design. Uh, maybe I, it's better if I just show you some, some pictures. Uh, ah, yeah. So this is uh, the first picture is here. You can see the materials that we work with. So on the left side, you have bottle caps. We also have, for example, delivery companies that sell to us their packaging uh, or like used cups and we shred them into like fine granulate and then we melt them and press them in a press which kind of looks like a uh, maybe like, um, oh yeah, basically here you see the bottle caps and on the right side you can see the plastic and uh, after it is shred and um, oh yeah. and then basically it works like uh, making a big pizza out of plastic so we uh, fill the granulate in a mold, we heat it up and we press it for about like one hour and then the result is this. Um, so basically we uh, create these patterns using different, uh, different colors from different types of, uh, of plastic and we create pattern designs and um, these are usually sheets that are about uh, one by one, one by one meter and we um, can cut them and then we turn them into uh, different, basically you can cut them just like a piece of wood and you can make all kinds of furniture or, or other interior designs out of it. Um, this is for example, this is one of our special uh, patterns. Uh, this is actually made from synthetic paper. So we don't just use the ground up gran granulate from uh, like the bottle caps that you've seen, but um, there's a material called Tyvek, which is, um, it basically looks like paper, but if you melt it, it uh, the ink that is in the paper melts and you create these colors which are actually more like a, it doesn't really look like plastic anymore, it looks more like a rock or um, maybe some, some kind of painting. Uh, this is another example of like the, similar, the, the same material. Um, and these are leftovers, which we also, and this is, I think, maybe an um, important part for you to know, um, all the leftovers in our production are shred again, and they are going back into, so the idea is to create a circular economy. Um, I, uh, here you can see some examples of what we, uh, how the final results look like. 
Yeah, and this is then in the end the, the, the furniture that comes out. So uh, maybe I skip a couple of, oh, oh no, maybe. Like, let's, let's stay here before I talk about the circular economy. So this is WYL, our company. Um, we already, originally started um, as four friends and I think what is uh, important for you to know if you ever want to start a company yourself or like a startup yourself, actually none of us had any background, real background uh, in recycling or environmental technology. I mean, I studied environmental policy, but it's very much theoretical. So it's more about, you know, uh, uh, climate policy and things like that and not really how you actually use a material and turn it to something. So when we came in, we were not specialists. We didn't really know how it's working. Also, we, most of our members didn't even have much experience doing business. But we were all very um, passionate about, about this topic and uh, we were willing to learn. So within about uh, one year, we actually acquired all the knowledge that we needed. Um, Oh, yeah, this is maybe also like a good example for you to show. I think the reason why we, in the end, we decided working with plastic is that basically, if you can see, this is a prediction of the plastic consumption, how it's going to be until 2050. We are about here right now, and you can see currently about this amount, like 9% are recycled. So you can see if... Uh, this, if we can believe this forecast, uh, it's a lot of plastic right now, like these like 91% that go into landfill. And it's like an issue that is just getting bigger. Uh, and you can also see here, for example, it's, and this is an example of like uh, uh, the biggest plastic consuming countries in the world. So Korea is also one of the top countries in the world uh, for plastic consumption. So we knew that this is an issue that has to be tackled. And we kind of tried to think about a way how to do this in a, in a way as a, small comp as a small team of five people. Um, yeah, so, and here we get to the idea of the circle economy. This is what I just mentioned before when I said that we, we shred the, all the leftovers and try basically to have as little waste in our production process as possible. Um, the circular economy, and this is, um, I'm not sure if I can talk all about all of these, but basically the idea is that you really change the, the economy in a way that you treat any waste as a resource. And uh, that basically in the future we will not throw away things anymore, but like we will use anything, um, everything as much as possible. Um, there's of course other possibilities too, like uh, usually the, how to say, the, the main creed for kind of recycling is uh, reuse and reduce and recycle. So recycling is only one part of, of many possibilities or like many things that we need to do. I think that even more important than recycling is probably re reducing. So one thing that I'm sometimes worried about is if we work with plastic is I don't want people to think that just because there is a company like WL that now it, you know, it is not a problem if you continue using plastic. It is, uh, it is a, it is a problem. And as you can see, it's just a way to deal with the waste that we already have. But the ideal case would be actually, of course, if we don't produce additional waste. So uh, the recycling has to go also in hand in hand with like a reducing of uh, consumption or like a change of consumption behavior. Um, um, then of course also like after reducing is also reusing. So that means like using, uh, for example, maybe not using, uh, you know, uh, cups that you just throw away or like, you know, if you go to a coffee shop, I mean, those are like very, uh, I guess you probably already know that. Uh, those are like very simple examples, but I think they can be applied also in like many other areas in, um, um, yeah. So maybe talking briefly about the materials that we use, there is uh, different types of plastic. Currently we use uh, basically 
out of these seven, we are working with three uh, types of plastic. The first is HDPE. That is what you usually have uh, with bottle caps, is the most typical form that you encounter in daily life. Then LDPE, which is basically the same material as HDP. LDP just stands for low density and HDPE for high density. Uh, so this is more like used for packaging. And then PP is actually, yeah, you have it a lot in cosmetic products like shampoo bottles uh, and also a lot of cups and things like that. Um, this is basically like the same list, but I, I thought it was uh, um, interesting to see also like how toxic they are and how many of them are recycled currently. So you can see that the material that we work with is actually the ones, the three that are not that toxic. Uh, the reason for that is mainly that as a small startup, we don't have the capability to really work with toxic material. We would kind of uh, harm ourselves. So this is really something I think you need uh, the bigger companies to work with it that also have you know enough money to take care uh, to uh, you know to have the right uh, safety measures. Uh, but maybe let's look a little bit of how the company actually started. So um, basically, when we started working, we didn't have any idea what we actually wanted to do. So. I'm not sure if I would advise uh, you to do the same thing. Um, for, but I think the, what, what is interesting in our founding process was that uh, for us, uh, we were very clear about the kind of values that we had and the kind of changes that we want. So we knew we wanted to change something. We didn't just want to uh, make money, but we, uh, we really looked at different issues in this world. Uh, that we wanted to improve and then basically we picked the plastic as the one that we wanted to tackle first. In the beginning was, uh, so the first year we didn't make any money. We were lucky that we, we had some, uh, uh, how's it, we, had, we saved some money by ourselves and also actually the technology that we use is open source technology. So we were able to actually make a lot of the machines ourselves. Uh, using blueprints that we just got off the internet. Um, so here you can see a little bit the process when we are working on it. Here, uh, by the way, like here uh, the white stuff, this is the synthetic paper that I was talking about that makes these be beautiful natural looking patterns. Yeah. So um, yeah, maybe in yeah in the when we created the common company, we spent, I would say, the first year, first of all, not making money, and second, also not having any products. But what we really did was we learned about the material, and we uh, really were investing a lot of time in just experimenting with the pattern designs, which is now basically. Uh, how to say our bread and butter because uh, we can make these we can make patterns that other companies cannot cannot make that easily and uh, but uh, I think that is one in, one important thing to know sometimes it takes some time and actually us making so we started getting in our first project after the first year which I would say is actually quite early for a startup and so since that we've been also not really relying much on investment, outside investment. We got a grant from the invest, uh, Ministry of Government of ELOC last year. And it, we, actually, we just got uh, some funding from the company GS. That's the company that has like the GS25 stores. Uh, it's always a little bit of a problem for a long time I was against actually getting money from private companies and the reason for that was first of all we didn't want to give away control of our company and second also we wanted to avoid uh, that other companies would use our image for greenwashing. That is kind of like a, a problem. In a way, in, in one side, on one side it's a good thing so we can see currently that the government and also 
a lot of other companies are very interested in the topic. So a lot of companies are changing themselves. Also, like they are promoting more themselves as more environmentally friendly. So on the one side, we can see that there is some effect that you know people, for example, their consuming behavior can change what is going on. But on the other side, it's, it's very often also very much on the surface. And uh, it is difficult to separate between the two. And sometimes it can be uh, uh, quite a moral dilemma because we also depend on, so we need money for our companies to su survive. But we also have to be careful about which partners we pick because we don't want to, uh, or, or like, so we, and I mean, all, often, obviously, they also have good intentions, but we also always have to, um, Reevaluate the how to say the the, the bef benefit that it gives to us, like the different projects, uh, with the with the moral question whether this is actually helping to change something or whether it's just pretending to change the society, but we actually just basically keep on doing what we what we are doing. So this is like a very difficult decision, and sometimes I'm not always sure if we do it right. Um, yeah, um, these are some more examples for, for example, the right side is a collaboration that we did with a small company, Korean company that's making speakers. Uh, and here are some, some product designs. Uh, this is some example for interior designs. This was for a school in the south of Seoul. It's actually Shimin, Shimin Dehak, Seoul Shimin Dehak. Uh, we did some, uh, interior exhibition and then also this is a witch house that we uh, facilitated we did for Kangwon World uh, last Christmas. So this was actually one of the toughest projects because we had to work outside in the cold at night for three days to install everything. Ah, yeah, This is also like an interesting example. So now this is our Paju, uh, um, uh, our Paju factory or Paju workshop. This is what we started at the beginning of this year. So it is actually very impressive to see what just happened within two years. So like two years ago we started, we didn't even know much about the technology. We have had to learn everything from scratch. And I would have never thought that you know, we would have, a, two years later, we would have a huge production space with our own um, saws and machines and uh, so on. Uh, yeah, these are some of our team members. Maybe just quickly, because I, um, in the beginning, I intentionally uh, skipped the private part, but maybe you're also curious about me, uh, how I actually got here and you know why I started doing this. So uh, I'm from the south of Germany, from the most southern part that you can imagine. So it's uh, in Bavaria, right at the border with Switzerland and Austria. This is the place uh, where I'm from, and I guess it uh, might have to do also why I'm interested in the environment. I think it's just because I'm uh, from a place that is very beautiful. I was, I think, starting from being like a little child, very, uh, I think I felt connected with nature, and I also could see what, you know, how the nature, nature is changing. And I think that later became a motivation uh, for what I'm doing now. Uh, this is just me, some, some pictures of me. Um, yeah, um, I came to Korea in 2006 and I studied quite a lot of different fields, uh, which I think were very helpful because, uh, and that is something also, if we talk about sustainability, we talk often about. Uh, we just think of it in terms of the environment or protecting the environment. But in my opinion, sustainability is a topic that actually encompasses almost all fields of life. Because basically what sustainable means is, does this make sense you know, in the long term? Can we do this? So if we talk about sustainability, there's also social sustainability. The question, for example, is an education system sustainable or an economic system? or like a, a, actually any kind of human behavior, I think we at this point need to question because uh, the technology is also changing, changing so fast that uh, it's really 
the, I think the established systems don't really work anymore. And uh, actually, to be honest, also a lot of adults at the moment probably don't really know how to continue from this point. Or like we all, I think, have like the same questions, like how can we make this uh, our lives better, and how can we also protect huma humanity and this this planet. Um, so, I, so I think that uh, for me, I had a liberal arts education, and for me that was quite helpful because it really gave me the ability to look at different fields, uh, not, as, not from the perspective of a, of a specialist, but more of a generalist, and also to see how all the topics, may, may that be history, or literature, or poetry, politics, environment, how these things are all connected, and how we also maybe need to know at least a little bit about all these things to think outside of the box and to find new solutions. Uh, I think what is, uh, as I mentioned it before, like we, when we started WL, we didn't know how to do things, but I think that we were very, quite open and we all came bringing our different experience in different fields and we were able to translate these experiences into something new. But I think, I think talking about education, I think that's an, like an important point, that if you only focus on one field, you will only look at it in a kind of 2D way. But maybe if you look at it from also the perspective of a different field, it will give you like a more complete picture of what's going on. And it will be also giving you more skill sets uh, to solve problems or to think about problems in a different way. Um, I guess the first thing that I guess I'm just curious about is what brought you to Korea in the first place to mm -hmm. study? Because uh, it's undergrad, I think. It's mm -hmm. fairly yes. uncommon. And what made you stay? And then, sorry, my second question would be around what, why is your company named Would You Love? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I came for Korea. I think it was mostly actually adventure. So it's hard to imagine, but there was a time when no one knew. It was not a long time ago, maybe like, like, yeah, I guess like 15, 20 years ago. Barely anyone in Europe knew uh, what Korea is, where it is, what it is about. People knew about uh, Japan and China, maybe, but even got those mixed up pretty much. You know, there was no, not a clear idea. And for me, uh, I think I graduated from high school in 2003, and that was a time uh, when people started talking about the rise of China, but also the rise of Asia that uh, our, how to say, the, the focus of our world would shift from the West more towards the East. And uh, for me as a young person, that would, was just very exciting. And I thought that maybe I, that it would be a good idea to go there and learn. Uh, the reason why in the end I, I picked Korea had, I think, different reasons. I think, but I think the main reason was that it was just like a really a blank spot on the map. It was kind of like, you know, if you see these old map, world maps, it was uh, terra incognita. It was a place that no one knows. It was uh, that no one is familiar and there also no one was interested in going. Uh, so I started reading about it. I also, while I was living in France, I happened to meet uh, a lot of Korean friends who were studying French with me and I just became very fascinated with the culture and I actually thought it was quite beautiful and also unique and interesting in a sense because it, the history of Korea is also really kind of similar to the history of Germany, at least the recent one, of having two countries divided. And for me that was, I think, reason enough to come here and to kind of just to understand what is happening here. Um, so this is, I, I think, why I came. Why the company is called Would You Love? This is, this is actually kind of random. It wasn't my choice, and I actually really disliked the name uh, from the beginning. But like, uh, so the thing is, our team, we are um, four founding members, and uh, what was important, so going back to the idea of sustainability, for us it was important that our company was run democratically. So each of us had 25% of the shares, and uh, so, on all, so we fight a lot, and on, on all the important issues, we also vote. And I just lost the vote for the name. And uh, the, the reason where it actually comes from, we have a one founding member who's very Christian, 
And for him, and he used to have a coffee shop called uh, Love One Another. And so for him, it was, I think that was the t kind of value that he wanted to bring into the company. And uh, I, th I thought it was a little, uh, like, I don't know, a little bit cringe or a little bit cheesy, the name, but I, I was okay with it and now I actually like it. Also because I think in Korean, it kind of sounds like uh, Uju, like Woju is like Uju love. So it's kind of also like a, like a play of words. Uh, and so I can, I think I'm happy now with the name. I, I don't mind it anymore. Thank you. Um, I think our students had a lot of questions, so I'm going to turn it over to the floor. If the students want to ask questions, please raise your hand. If plastic wasn't a problem in the world, uh, what do you think you'd be doing now? Um, so if plastic would... Uh, I'm, I'm actually sure that maybe plastic one day won't, won't be a problem anymore, but there's other problems. For example, I think the second problem, I mean, there's also climate change, right? And then the second problem after plastic is concrete. So this is actually why I put this picture back in the, uh, on the wall. This is not what we are doing at the moment, but this is actually an architect uh, from uh, the United States. I think he's from New Mexico who started building houses made of trash in the desert. And you can see all these like pillars are made of like glass bottles and uh, cans. The, wa the thick walls are actually made of car tires. So I think he's using up to 80% or 90% of recycled material to build his, his houses. So for us, I think it was never about the plastic. Actually, that was also something I lost the vote. I actually really dislike plastic. I don't even like using plastic products very much. And I wasn't very excited about that either. Um, so we are doing plastic now, but I think we're also going to expand it on other. So the idea, I think, if I would have to explain what What You Love, what you love, what you love is about, is a company that develops new ideas to use trash as a resource. And I think this is what, what we do. So if one day maybe, let's say, LG or Samsung have create these like huge plastic recycling plants where we cannot, you know, they do it better than us, then we will do something else. Yeah. But I think there's a lot, still a lot of other things to do. Yeah. So what are your future plans for the company like later on? Okay, that's a, actually a really good question. So as you, I, I mean, you've seen we do interior and furniture. We are very interested in uh, the plastic using it as an alternative uh, building material. So that means uh, we actually do the opposite. So there is a couple of companies who do the similar, a similar thing than we do, but most of them make little, they use injection molding and they use maybe make little trinkets, you know, keychains or, you know, little cups or plates. But we want to actually go in the other direction. We want to uh, think of it really more as a construction material because like I said, also con concrete is another problem that we have that we basically use up a lot of the sand that can be used for concrete and we also need to think about how we build houses in the future. So this is something that we want to experiment with more. Yeah. What was like what would you want to name the company like before you lost the vote? Can you what what was the last one? Uh, before you said that you lost a vote for the name. Like uh -huh. what would you want to name? To be honest, I, I don't. I don't think I had, and I or like I don't remember. I, the thing is, the thing is, the the name was on the table before we even had like a you know. So yeah, I yeah, there there was no idea on my side. I think. Where do you buy your products, and who you want to, like your products to be bought by? Like, our, so our products. Okay, this is another really good question. So at the. Um, at the moment, we don't sell products to, you know, so what this is called B2C, like business to customer. We don't do B2C business. What we do is B2B, which stands for business to business. The reason for that is, is that, um, so basically what we do is we do a lot of customized work. So as you could see before, like the witch house, usually the customers come to us with a problem and uh, we create a solution for them. So each piece that we do, like let's say the furniture, is unique for that specific customer. Uh, we, we are currently working on a 
B2C product uh, line that we want to sell on our website or maybe also on Instagram, but we are not ready yet. So yeah, the, the, it, one reason for that is actually the price, you know, it's still more, exp more expensive to, like so recycled plastic is more expensive than normal plastic. And we also, as you could see, we have the presses and it's all very much a lot of manual labor. So the products are quite expensive compared to things that you can just buy off uh, IKEA, for example. And that's why we were careful about like, you know, selling to normal customers because you need to have a product that also can, you know, has the quality to, you know, be in that price range. And we uh, still want to improve on that quality. You told that you're working about recycling plastic. So which companies are your biggest competitor? Our biggest, our bi biggest competitor. Uh, I think there is a, so the thing is at the moment the the, comp, the, the for specifically for, for what we do, it is still pretty fresh. So us uh, basically having worked uh, for two years, we are already one of the oldest companies. Um, so there is a for example a company called No Plastic Sunday that is quite good. There is. Uh, there's, I think, also one, uh, one company called Just Project. But they're all about the similar size. Uh, so the biggest competitors, they're not really big. Yeah, we, are, we are still kind of on the level where we, we're pretty much uh, more like a, you know, like a craft shop or like a workshop. Yeah. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yep. How do companies, uh, how do your clients find out about you? How do you, is um, it about also? So a lot of this word of my, or like uh, I think our main presence online is our Instagram. So a lot of people come through Instagram, and a lot is a lot is also I think I've mentioned that the technology that we use is open source. So there is a global movement called Precious Plastic. So they have they develop the machines and they put the. Um, them online. So if you if you're interested in the topic, actually you should check it out. Uh, so they each country has a association, a precious plastic association, and all the companies who work, use that technology are also registered on that website. So people can also basically, if they go on the precious plastic Korea site, they can find us amongst the other competitors. And yeah, so a lot of the people, they first hear about the precious plastic movements and then they find us through the, the, the website. What do you think is the most effective way to reduce plastic waste? And like, how will you do it in the I think the uh, most effective way to reuse plastic waste actually is to look at the packaging. I think especially in Korea, you know, like there, you maybe, I've, I'm not sure if, you, like, so I was shocked when I first bought some cookies in Korea because basically they come in a packaging and then in the packaging, all the cookies are wrapped in a separate packaging as well. So I think, uh, that would be the main thing. I think that basically reduce uh, redundant packaging, you know, that is just for aesthetics. And uh, obviously as a consumer, we cannot control that directly, but I think then it's, uh, the only thing we can do is maybe try to find an alternative product that uh, is a little bit better. But I also know that that is quite tricky because sometimes it's just hard to find an alternative. Do you have any plans to expand our career? Uh, out of Korea, expand out of Korea. Ah, plans to expand out of Korea. Initially we didn't because uh, we just thought that is also like the, one of the uh, sustainability questions. First of all, we thought there is a, enough work for us to do in Korea or like, you know, it's, it's big enough for us to basically work here forever without having to expand. And then the idea was also that we didn't want to ship, you know, because like that is another issue, global shipping is also uh, problematic. You know, a, a lot of our, I think there is a meme of, you know, I think it's some kind of fruit that is, you know, harvested in one continent and then it's sent to another continent for packaging and then it's being sent back. So, you know, this is like how our current global supply, like the global supply chain works. And uh, so that is, I think, also something that has, we have to rethink is how much that it, maybe it makes sense to produce more things locally so originally, no, 
But I also like, especially if we talk about plastic as a building material, I think that maybe a lot of the solutions that we are working on maybe fit more uh, developing countries, uh, for example, in Southeast Asia. Also, for example, if you think about you know, these type of houses, I think maybe it would work more in an off-grid environment, maybe a place where there's no electricity. So we are currently thinking about maybe doing some projects in Southeast Asia related to developing programs. But then I think we also would have to set up the production place there because it doesn't make sense to ship that you know, from, from, from Korea. And how much like, uh, furniture have you made around about? <laughs> wow. I'm not sure if I can answer that question. Um, I wouldn't be able to, to count. But uh, I mean, it's been like one year, right? And I would say we made like about $200,000 $200, revenue which is maybe not that big, but I think for, for like the first year, I was quite happy with that. Yeah. Was there any time you thought about giving up on your company? Every day. <laughs> no, I think that is, you know, that is like if you work in a startup, you know, you always have worries, you know, and things don't go perfect. You, people, things most of the time go more wrong than per perfect, perfect. You know, you fail a lot. It's very often you have to, uh, you know, find different ways or you way, work around. But this is also like then how you grow. Then, but yeah, I think that is like a part of being a startup is like yeah, thinking about giving up all the time as well. Yeah. If plastic wasn't your material, what would your material be? Um, so currently, except plastic, we work with uh, kind of waste wood. So for example, uh, wood that is being left over after forest fires. So this is one material that I really like because it looks very beautiful and it's not really used much at other places. Uh, I could see later also us working with glass or, or metal. But the thing is, that, you know, for glass and metal, they are already being recycled very efficiently. So that would be really more for an aesthetic reason more than for really practicality. Yeah. Please. Explain to us about the projects that you enjoyed the most. Um, okay, there, there were several ones. I think one that I enjoyed just because I think the, I really love the result is we did a, a cultural center in Namhae. I'm not sure if you have a, ever been to Namhae. It's basically in the middle of Korea, the most south you can go at the, and it was right as, at the fishing port. And the cultural center was built in uh, some kind of old storage facility, which is turned into like a very beautiful place where they do exhibitions and or classical concerts. And you, so you, so in the coffee shop in there, there's kind of a lounge, and we made the the bar table for for the for this place. And uh, it has like a view right on the ocean. So I think this is. Just like the first one that comes to my mind right now. I'm, I'm very proud of, proud of that just because it's so beautiful. When you melt the plastics, is, are there fumes? And if so, how do you work with that? There, there are fumes, but like that's, like I've see, I think you've seen the graph before. So the ones that we use are the type of plastic that are not, not that toxic. Uh, I think they can, it's maybe still not a good idea to you know, st inhale the fumes all day. So we have masks. We, we, we do have gas masks and we also have a filter system that we turn on, so basically to, to, to reduce the fumes. Yeah. The also, but also the fumes are usually, uh, actually only when it's cooling down, uh, then it's, uh, they, they can be stronger, but like usually in the heating pr process itself, I think they're relatively little. Like to rise in succession or like being more known to other people? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. So we've, uh, yeah, we've been contacted like, uh, like recently also by like, uh, so for example, there's, I think there's this uh, TV personality, a Belgian guy called Julian. Maybe you know him, he's famous for speaking, like uh, talking, like his Korean is quite good. And he also talks a lot about sustainable issues. And he just called us up suddenly and he said, uh, and we, he's opening also, I think, some kind of coffee shop. And we also made the bar 
basically the counter table for his place. And that was quite interesting that you know, suddenly this celebrity came up to us and uh, asked us to work together. And I think that, yeah. So yeah, that, that happens all the time, yeah. Okay, this is actually a good uh, um, point also because I didn't mention it like in the presentation before. There's different sources. Um, so we work with the government recycling centers. So, you know, because in the end, the collection of the waste, the government does the best. So like we work with the local government recycling centers. So a lot of the bottle caps come from there. But I think you've also seen like the cups, for example, we work with startups. For example, there is one startup that is uh, delivering salad, and basically the kind of salad, it's kind of like Tupperware, the, the boxes that they don't use anymore, they send to us and we process them. Or for, for example, also for the um, synthetic paper, we work with a company that is printing bags and they send us their leftover. So we also have basically partnerships with other small companies to take care of their waste. How long it takes to make one of the sheets? Okay, so just making, just pressing the sheet takes about, I would say, about two hours. Maybe with mixing it two and a half, so one by one. And then if you include the, you know, then the, making the design, assembling it, I would say it easily could take one day for one piece of furniture. But then of course you also don't do one, just one. You will probably do several at the same time. Do you have a catchphrase? Uh, sorry, a what? A catchphrase. A catchphrase? No, not really. At least uh, I can't think of it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, the path over there. Maybe tebak sakon, but that's that just like more something that like people say in our company. Kind of, it's yeah, yeah, but not not really for marketing or anything like that. No, no. How much is uh, it worth in dollars of like one of your products? Like any of them uh -huh. the chair? So, so for example, let's, let's take an example of a chair. It would be about uh, like Yukshib Manwan or, or maybe about $600 just like for one chair. Yeah. <laughs> I think they got sticker shock. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's, why, that's why I said before, like the uh, yeah, B2C, we don't really do yet because we need to find, we need to find, uh, because personally, for example, I wouldn't buy a chair for, you know, for Yukshib Manwa. So that, that's why we weren't really confident yet. So, but I think what works, I think you've seen like some of the lamp prototypes. So the lamps are smaller than a chair. And I think that, you know, maybe for a normal person, just like kind of psychologically, if you, if you let's say have like a small, so the smaller lamp we could maybe make for Ishimanon. I think some people would buy a nice lamp for Ishimanon. That is, that is not like an insane price. So that's why we kind of really think carefully about, you know, what kind of products we, we want to make. And so it, that, it's taking some time. Uh, what can we do as young individuals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've seen this question before. Actually, and, and, and actually on, in the, on the way here on the bus, I thought about it a lot. Okay, so there's two things. One thing is I think really try to like just learn ab about what's going on. Because the thing is, you know, it's, it's easy to get frustrated. Because even if you try hard, you know, it's easy to get frustrated and it's easy to be cynical about it and just to think, you know, this, is the, this doesn't work out anyway. Or like what can, you know, what can one person do, you know, it doesn't really matter. Some, some kind of, that kind of idea. But, um, so I think two things. So one thing is uh, just try to understand it. And then the second thing is just maybe think about what sustainability means for you. So basically, just start questioning in your life, you know, can we do this forever? Does it make sense? What will happen if we continue? And this is not just about the environment, but like I said before, also about other behaviors, like human behaviors. And then I think uh, maybe the third thing is, you know, individuals are maybe are weak, but we also live in a time where we have access to mass media, you know, for example, you know, TikTok or, you know, there, there is like ways to really spread information virally, which we didn't have before. 
And I think this is like a way that uh, uh, also can be used for, you know, like forwarding this cause. Yeah, what I think an indi individual can do. Well, thank you again, um, Mr. Becker, for your time thank you. and for showing us kind of what's possible in transforming trash into art. Really yeah. beautiful pieces. We look forward to seeing your pieces everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you once again for your time. And good luck to you and would you love. Yeah, thank you. And I.